Hey everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Cognition Ignition with C-Class. In today's episode, I will be going over the cognitive function, extroverted thinking. Extroverted thinking is one of four decision-making cognitive functions recognized by Carl Jung and more recently interpreted by Dr. Dario Nardi in his book, The Magic Diamond. In today's episode, you will learn how to notice extroverted thinking as the hero archetype when you or someone you are interacting with is using it as their dominant cognitive function. We'll go over how extroverted thinking shows up when you or somebody you are interacting with is using it in a leadership position. And for anybody who isn't sure of their type or if they are using extroverted thinking, we will go over the holistic and analytic ways that extroverted thinking can be used in, which were talked about in Dario Nardi's book, The Magic Diamond. Before we get into extroverted thinking, I just wanted to remind viewers to subscribe to my channel if you want to, if you want to learn more about the Myers and Briggs type indicator and cognitive functions, as well as self and business development and great tips for creating a fulfilling life. If you like this episode, then don't forget to hit the like button and let me know in the comments. All right, so what we're gonna see in this first slide is that extroverted thinking is also known as timely building in the book, The Magic Diamond. And the reason that Dario Nardi assigned the nickname timely building was because of the way that it shows up in reality. And what I wanted to do was first share with you some of the answers to the questions in the Myers and Briggs type indicator assessment and how those answers are going to relate to extroverted thinking. So if you do test as either an ENTJ or ESTJ, then that would mean that extroverted thinking is your dominant function. Or if you test as an ISTJ or INTJ, then it would be your auxiliary function. So how, do you, so how do they determine that that is your type? It's because they're asking questions and you are providing answers um, that explain your preferences. So some of the preferences for extroverted thinkers or timely builders would be to determine success by measurement or other objective data such as time taken and to construct an argument to convince someone using evidence clearly in front of you both. They will also follow a straight line of reasoning and they will lay out methods for others to complete tasks in time using resource and efficient measures. So what you're realizing here is that extroverted th thinkers are actually taking in a lot of the information that sets standards. So how long something should take, how much it should cost. And then when they try to convince others or are really, really, whenever they're interacting with others, what you're gonna find is that it's usually to give, convince them to do something that that extroverted thinker wants. And how they do this and how they do this efficiently is they use evidence, evidence that everybody can see. It's a lot different than introverted thinking, which we'll learn about in a future episode, because it is evidence that is clearly in front of the person they're explaining it to, as well as themselves. And, um, so you're not going to know to, you're not going to see them, um, get into a lot of arguments about what they want done because what they are presenting to people as what needs to get done is fact. It's, it's concrete information. It can be measured almost all the time. And if the standards aren't met, it's easily noticed. They also like to follow a straight line of reasoning. So what this really means is that they aren't going to try to jump from one part of a job or one part of a project to another part. They're going to try to set um, ways of doing this, doing something consistently to make sure that they're meeting their time standards. They're meeting the cost, the whatever the cost or the budget is of that project. And they're going to try to make it where it's universally going to work each time. And then again, because this is a, this is a function that wants to get things done, they are going to use the function in a way that allows them to direct others and uh, mobilize others to get things done in the way that they need to be. 
This will pretty much bring us into how you can recognize timely building as the hero archetype. And when you're looking for somebody who is using timely building as their hero archetype, you're going to look for somebody who is efficient with time and resources. And they will even get upset a lot of times if resources are wasted or time is mismanaged, which is why they make uh, great leaders also, because they are going to make sure that projects are completed um, on time. And they're actually going to even try to get it done before the deadline. They are also going to use practical ways to solve a variety of problems. So what this means is that they are not going to try to find the most technolo technologically advanced way of doing something. They're not going to try to find new ways of doing something. If something works and it works efficiently, then that's the way they're going to want to do it. And they're also not going to spend a lot of time um, using um, theoretical ideas, basically, unless they can see those theoretical ideas in actions, which means they're really not theoretical anymore. They're actually um, having an effect on the outer world. And they like to make objective decision making. So they're not going to um, necessarily worry about other people's emotions when making decisions. They're not going to kind of do any guesswork. It's going to be based on the facts and data that are right in front of them. And they are also going to use easy to follow reasoning. This kind of goes right along with them with the preference of keeping things in line. It's because they want other people to be able to complete the task that they are trying to get done. And instead of jumping from one thing to another, it's easy to just keep the same reasoning of why something gets done. And I think they, that also you'll notice because it's reasoning that they do look at the why something is being done in a certain way. And they're going to be skilled in persuasion. So they're going to have no real problem of getting people to really get moving and get things done. They may actually um, get upset when people kind of don't do what they want, what their, what the goal is. If they're not actually working towards the goal, they're going to be easily upset. And that is really a good way of recognizing it as the hero archetype. Um, because if you don't necessarily agree with an extroverted thinker, you will know pretty quickly that um, they don't agree with you either. So that's what you're looking for. Then, um, so some of the really strange you're going to see is that the objective uh, decision making is based on facts and evidence, which means that it's um, often going to be right and often going to be effective. And it also, because it's evidence, if more evidence comes, comes into play, then their um, extroverted thinkers are really going to analyze that evidence to make sure that they are making the most efficient decision that they can. And when they're doing this, they're focusing on functionality, which um, allows them to apply procedures and really control outcomes because that's what they're trying to do. Um, they don't want to have surprises pop up for them when they are doing a project or any kind of task they're doing. They, they understand it can happen, but once they realize that they're going to try to implement some kind of system that allows um, procedures to follow and functionality to happen in whatever they're doing. This also means that they may not be so into the aesthetics of things. So that's, I've talked about it before, extroverted thinking is a very get it done thing. So as long as it works, then it's okay with them. It's kind of like if it fits, it ships. That's a lot of different ways to look at it. Um, they're also going to use uh, specif specificity in words and dates to provide convincing and decisive explanations. So a lot of extroverted thinkers are very well read and they do have a large vocabulary that they can use to persuade others. Um, they're going to use strict uh, timelines. They're going to give deadlines for things. And what that will do is actually encourage people to get moving with deadlines. Things have to get done. So again, um, 
they're really trying to get other people moving a lot and that's their real strength. They are, their uh, extroverted thinkers probably will not say this isn't true. They do want to be at the top of any organization that they can be in. And they're not looking for perfect outcomes if it's going to affect their efficiency. That's, that's another uh, strength that they have because you know, it's true, nothing is ever perfect. I mean, as much as people try to make things perfect, there's always those little mistakes. And what extroverted thinkers realize is that it's better off having something than having nothing because you are worried about perfection. And the last thing that uh, we see as a strength is that they are always going to appear confident. And even though they appear confident, it's not necessarily true. And why this is a strength, why them not being so confident is a strength, but appearing confident is a strength as well, is because in their own minds, they are always working to improve. And the, they show, a lot of extroverted thinkers show confidence um, kind of as a way of protecting themselves. But in the back of their own head, they're always telling themselves that they are not good enough and working to get to what they think is good enough. So as a leader, that is what you want. And they also notice it within others, which is why they are so hard on themselves a lot of times is because they see other people's skills, which they may not have a lot of access to based on their cognitive function use, but they're always going to still step, they're, they're always going to be willing to take that hard path to step out of their realm and be better for themselves. So that's pretty much a general understanding, pretty much with all that information, you, sh you could pretty much uh, say who has extroverted thinking in their stack. But every once in a while you run into a situation where it's hard to tell what cognitive function that other people are using. So what Dario Nardi did was he put together analytic and holistic uses of each cognitive function. And before I end this, I just wanted to go through the analytical uses of extroverted thinking and the holistic uses of extroverted thinking. So for analytic uses, you're going to see somebody who is very committed to success, but they are going to be very selective in their goals. So they won't necessarily take on every challenge that comes on. They're going to take on the challenges that they see best fit to reach their goals specific goals and to reach success. Um, they're going to speak logically and with confidence. This is because they are analyzing data and facts and they aren't going to hesitate to um, repeat those facts back to others in order to make their point clear. They will apply a business mindset to most areas of their life and that's because extroverted thinking is, is a way of creating structure. It's, and th that's what you want in business. And once an extroverted thinker realizes that it, it's very efficient in business practices, it's very easy to bring that into your own life of um, wanting to have that effectiveness all the time. And you need that mindset. They um, will manage and mobilize others to get things done. And they are going to worry more about speed and profit more so than usefulness or accuracy. So when they have a task that they want to complete, they want to get it done as quickly as possible. And they don't worry necessarily about um, any of the little imperfections as long as everything can get, everything can be used properly. Then when you get into the holistic uh, extroverted thinking, I think this is where you see a big change. This is probably anyone who's using extroverted thinking in a holistic way. That may be where you see some of the uh, doubt and typing because someone using it holistically is going to be, rather than wanting to be on top of an organization, they may want to support the overall organization. They may want to be a supporter of the leader of a specific organization. And that's, really not something that you hear a lot about extroverted thinkers, but that same person is going to be just as committed to the success of that business. They just don't want to put the same amount of effort into creating that um, goal basically, or that outlook of what success is. They're also going to be a little bit more frugal and economical. 
um, they may be more, a little bit more into um, making sure their day to day is all set more so than the analytic use of like business mindset. It may just be really trying to prevent any distractions during through the day or um, putting themselves into debt or getting a um, like maybe a house that's too big or something they couldn't afford. They're going to really look at those kind of things um, and look for success in their own little facet of life more so than creating a large industry business where success can um, happen in a lot of different places. So another thing that you're going to see out of the holistic you. Uh, the holistic use of extroverted thinking is that they will prefer to find the accuracy and probably won't rush a job so often. They will also try to, to um, still be efficient. They're going to try to actively reduce distractions when on a mission where I do think that you would see more of the analytic use really engaging with people and being okay with being distracted because it would allow them to be more efficient in the long run, knowing what's going on and taking in the data that other people are providing them. Um, holistic uh, extroverted thinkers will um, be more comfortable with different forms of complexity because the analytic uh, extroverted thinkers really want to be very knowledgeable in their specific areas that they are trying to create success in. So they want to know the timeframes for those specific areas. They want to know the procedures for those specific areas where a holistic user may want to have more of a general understanding and more willing to dive into those things that they want to understand. Um, they're also going to be willing to step out of their comfort zone. And, um, and this is specifically when it's going to maximize rewards. Um, so this could even mean just like changing a job. This could mean moving to a new house. And the reason that I think this is important to realize with holistic extroverted thinkers is because I do think that um, someone using it holistically may hesitate to take their the action that will allow success for their own goals a lot of the time. And if a holister, if a holistic extroverted thinker realizes they have this willingness inside them, they may be a little quicker to act more like that analytical uh, use of extroverted thinking. Because once analytical use of extroverted thinking sees a, a, a probable successful path, they're going to be likely to take that path pretty quickly. So I think that was a lot of information for you guys. I think you have a lot to go off of. Um, and I'm going to be doing the other three functions over the next two weeks. So you should definitely be checking those out. And um, I do have a question for my viewers. I do want to know if, um, if you did watch my perceiving function episodes, I want to know if you like the format of that video more so than the format of this one. In the perceiving function videos, I use the whiteboard. Here, I'm trying to keep the screen as a presentation with um, my image over in the bottom corner. So I would like to know what my viewers uh, like to see better when I'm going over these topics. And I would also like to remind you guys, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Um, hit the like button if this video helped you at all. Um, leave me a comment and also, just so everybody knows, I am doing a lot of life coaching right now and I am offering the services. I'm uh, starting the, the services with coaching on the Myers and Briggs type indicator, specifically cognitive functions and using all eight cognitive functions because that is the most important thing to do. So if you would like to get a coaching session, then reach out to me. I pretty much try to customize these based on how people um, want to use it. What are you trying to do and accomplish? So we would really get into um, understanding what you are trying to accomplish before I can tell you all the specifics of how I would coach you. Um, don't forget to check out all my other videos. And I uh, can't wait to see you guys with the uh, upcoming co cognitive function videos that I'm putting together. Thanks for watching.